All right, hello, seniors and senior females. Ha <laughs> ha. Welcome to the Resting Uwu Face, a uh, fan fiction reading podcast for introverts by introverts. I am Joey Hood and Tater, and today I will be continuing reading Stay, a uh, Tobaku story by Todoroki is a weeb. I'm never going to stop finish reading this thing because I read like a caveman. Um, and of course, you can read along in the link in the description below. And let's hop right in this. Uh, we're going to start off on chapter, well, we're at chapter five. Uh, it's Todoroki's POV. If you don't know what happened last episode, it's basically um, Bakugo and Todoroki uh, admitted feelings for each other and had another, another little kiss. No no finger banging, though. No finger blasting in my Christian story, I tells you. But uh, now Todoroki's going to his parents' house? I don't know. The rocking of the train back and forth jostled me awake. It was 8 o'clock, the train bare and empty. I was in the subway traveling to see my sister. This weekend with the party and other things, I totally forgot about the conversation me and my sister, Fuyumi, had a week ago. She said she had news, but it was risky to talk about it over the phone. She knew the CIA was listening in. Knowing that Endeavor wouldn't be in the house today, I decided to come visit her. We got along really well. Plus, she was all alone with father now that Natsuo had gone off to college. It even made it easier for me to see mom afterwards. So, it was really just common sense to go visit her. However, our last conversation, she seemed a bit worried. That was never good. She was always so bright and bubbly, even with the flaming asshole around. Yet, I have no idea what it could be. The things she has to tell me about that father can't hear about. I sigh, looking out the train window to see the sun shining over the land of the city. Lost in thought, I dozed off slightly. The thing not only my sister knew, but last night as well. Just thinking about what happened sent a rush of heat to my face. I'm not single. Holy shit, we hugged and kissed, and next time we might even hold hands. Did that really happen? That wasn't a dream? That really wasn't a dream? I'm so glad this train is empty because right now, I'm so fucking hard. No, I'm blushing and smiling like an idiot. Suddenly, a voice came over the intercom. Stating that we arrived at the stop, I grabbed my jacket, putting it on, and I tried to stop blushing. Walking off the train, there was a small amount of people. However, most spotted me instantly and took out their phones. I didn't realize I stumbled upon an anime convention. Being the son of Endeavor already gave me a large amount of unwanted attention. But... Having such a large and bulging penis gave me even more unwanting attention. But becoming and training to become a hero myself, me along with most of my classmates, could now not go anywhere without at least 20 photos taken. I didn't run. Over the past years, I learned not to, and just ignore the pedestrians, because they're peasants and I'm better than them. Beginning the short walk to my house, it was only about five minutes away, and it took me no time to get there. Yet seeing the house always puts me on edge. Bad memories always came flooding back. Plus, there was always the possibility he could be home, and I was praying to God he wasn't. This means a lot, for I am an atheist. This was probably the only downside to visiting. I was always nervous father was there. Knocking on the door only made it worse, until that white hair appeared as my sister opened the door. Ah, shit. Ah, it's another female voice. Ah. Shoto. <laughs> God. Shoto. Shoto. Fuck it. 
Sartre, she exclaimed, her voice, her arms wrapped around, hugging me tightly. Hey, sis, relax on the bear hug. I can barely breathe. I laughed, only slightly. Her hugs really weren't a laughing matter. I'm scared one day she's going to hug me to death. Someone seems more smiley than usual. Come inside, we have a lot to talk about. Fumia grinned. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know how to pronounce my own sister's name. Releasing me and walking inside the Japanese-style house. What, I'm not allowed to be happy to see my sister? I replied, walking inside, closing the door behind me, and moving towards the couch where Fuyumi had taken a seat. Yet, what she said next stopped me dead in my tracks. She told me our mom died. Oh yeah, sure, you're happy to see me, I know that. But are you sure your good mood isn't due to anything else? She retorted. What? There's no way she could know. That all too familiar rush of blood came right back to my penis. I'm kidding, it says my face. Uh, so what news did you have to tell me? I dodged the question and tried changing the subject. Trying to change the subject, I see. Well, is there something you wouldn't want to want to tell your dear older sister? <laughs> something like a kiss, perhaps? She smirked more. And more heat came to my face. An obvious dead giveaway. She knew right away. Well, in all my life, I don't think I've ever seen you blush once, Shoto. I've seen you cry. Piss your pants, maybe. Even shit and cum. God. Uh. Dear God. Cancel the show. Okay, okay, fine. How do you even know about it? How do you... Do you know who it was, I wondered? How much she knew? Well, first off, I keep in contact with Yasu Rosu, and she told me first out of everybody. She didn't even have to tell me who. It was a little ob... It was a little obvious, little bro. And yes, I have also known that you were gay. That was even more obvious to me than the last. <clears throat> oh great, Momo told everyone, even my family. Then suddenly, a terrifying thought struck me. In this world, there was only one thing that scared me, and that was, unfortunately, my dad. Well, not specifically him. At least not anymore. He's kind of a bitch. It was the thought of him finding out. I was not straight. That scared the living daylights out of me. I can't change, even if I try, even if I wanted to. Put in a lot of commentary in this one. He wanted to sculpt my life out for me. Every little decision, the biggest thing besides being number one hero, was having kids with powerful quirks. That was kind of impossible when you're gay. I had already rebelled so much against him. He would see it as another act of rebellion and a choice instead of, well, just me being me. I can't wait for chapter 10 when Todoroki just like stumbles upon Endeavor getting railed by hawks. And then they're like, oh, we can be gay together. <laughs> and then they have like a father-son, like, bonding thing. It's like, oh, we both like dicks in the ass. No, he doesn't know, Shoto. Don't worry, I'll make sure of it. Fuyumiya speaking broke my thought process. Oh yeah, thanks. I sighed in relief. However, this was yesterday, so now that was old news. Spot, sister. I know that you Talk to Bakugo, it's written all over your face. For you, me? That's a scar. No, not that. I want to know what happened. I'm so curious. She practically squealed. Gosh, my sister's such a fangirl. You're such a fangirl. You were squealing last episode. Jeez. What a hypocrite. Finally taking a seat on the couch, I 
caved. Okay, I'll tell you. However, you can't tell anyone else, especially Momo. I'll tell you why in a minute. Fine, I won't, she huffed. And she puffed. <laughs> and she blew my house down. Fine. Uh, uh, so, uh, um, mom, we're, boy, boy, sorry, I'm just having a hard time saying, boy, Bakugo and I are, are, boy, uh, oh my god, just say it, boyfriends, we're dating, I blurted. In return, she squealed in delight. Oh, that's so cute. That's so precious. My precious. Well, why can't I tell anyone? Come on, come on, come on. We're about halfway through this. We can get this done. We can get this done. Well, we were talking about whether we should tell the class. But then I told him the whole class knew about me having a crush on him. So then he said I was bad at keeping even my own secrets, to which I replied he was the worst. So then he challenged me, whoever lets the class know the first has to do what the other says for a day. I explained to the amusement of my sister. What are you laughing at? I questioned, not finding this funny. Shoto, you're going to lose in less than a day, she snickered. What? I am not, I objected. Sure, whatever you say, Shinto. Before we talk about what you came here for, though, I have one more question. Have at it, I replied. Who's the top and who's the bottom? That's a vibe. This confused me. What does she mean, top or bottom? Like, who's the better hero? That depends on the situation. Ooh! That's unexpected. Go on, she says. I give her a weird look. She's being weird. Well, like our quirks are both evenly matched, so I don't really know who the top hero would be out of the two of us, I continued, leaning forward to grab one of the two full bottles of water that were on the table in front of me. In response, my sister laughs extremely hard to the point of tears. Are you okay? What's so funny? I asked, honestly, a bit concerned now. I opened the water bottles, taking a sip. Shoto, honey, I'm talking about who wore top and bottom in sex. Oh, oh, oh. I promptly spit out my water. Sex with, with Bakugo? My mind couldn't even comprehend that. What? Uh... How that would be. A considerable amount of smoke was coming from my face. Uh, so the conversation we are supposed to be having, I tried changing the subject again. Okay, based on that reaction, I'll definitely the bottom. About the other conversation, I hollered, flustered. Okay, okay, fine. She laughed. After both me and her calmed down from the previous discussion, I cleaned up the water, and she began to talk. Nah, nah, now I gotta have a serious conversation in this fucking voice. Bro, the day you called, Dad asked me to go grab something from his room. But on his desk, I saw something. It was files, lots of them, and they were all about Toya. Toya? Oh my god. How long has it been? He disappeared when we were younger. He was around 18 when he just ghosted us. All of us. It was just another tragedy of my life. Nothing new. Father basically forbid me from seeing my siblings, but Toya didn't listen. He was always trying to stand up for me when mom couldn't. When he left, there was no obstacles in Father's Day to sculpt me into his desires, forbidden even to mention his name. He just became another lost memory, drowned out by the unpleasant ones of my childhood. Oh my god, what were they exactly about? What did they say about him? I pondered, wondering. 
what they could have in relation to my long-lost sibling. Well, there were photos of him, along with camera tape from my own house. And a missing poster. What? A missing poster? We were his only family, and father never did anything for us, unless it was something he wanted. Mom couldn't have. Not so along with my sister, were almost never allowed electronics. Well, w- were you able to see anything else? No. Dad came in and yelled at me. But that's the most concerning part. He seemed scared. Scared that I saw something. He was hiding something. I think Toya found out, and father did something horrible to him. God, I can't take this seriously in this voice. Wow, that was a lot to take in. Father kept many things under wrap, including the barbecue and bacon chicken one, crispy. Make it a meal to remember with crispy chicken breast strips plus bacon with smoky barbecue sauce, cool mayo, tomato, and lettuce in a soft toasted tortilla wrap. Wrap of the day every Tuesday and Sunday at your local McDonald's. But it's completely possible that he did indeed do something awful. Well, what can we do about it, I questioned. I don't know. He moved the files and the tape. I just wanted to let you know what I found. I feel like I have to tell somebody, she explained, a sigh reaching her lips. I sighed as well, leaning my head slightly to look at the time. It was 9.20. Fuyumiya followed my gaze. Her face sad but understanding. You should probably go. It would be bad if you ran into him, she mumbled. Hey, how about I visit you along with mom every weekend too? I know it sucks to be the only one left in the house with that flaming garbage can. You only have to get through it for a few more months until you're 18. And I'll be right behind you. I gave her a smile. Yeah, that sounds nice. And maybe next time you can introduce me to a certain someone. She teased. A light pink tainted my cheeks. And not my face cheeks. Um, maybe. I'm not sure that's a good idea right now, I replied. Well, because you would have two people teasing you, she smirked. Yes, actually. I can't handle the two of you separate. Together would probably kill me. I laughed. God, now that I think about it, those two would get along. I got up, Fuyumiya began to show me out. Now it was time to go see Mom. Hey, by the way, Mom knows too that you are indeed a flaming homosexual. Don't think I didn't tell her. Fuyumi yelled as I walked down the path. Oh great, I responded, waving as she shut the door. For the first time in a long time, instead of leaving that house in sadness, I was smiling, pure unfiltered happiness. Life was definitely looking up for this Shoto Todoroki. And right now, it felt as if nothing could bring me down. Alright, that's all for today, my wet t-shirts. I hope you liked it, even though it was a lot of me making up bullshit. Um, And if not, please don't tell me because I'm sensitive. But if you do like it, please give some love to the author. Again, the links are in the description. Unless you're not listening on uh, YouTube, then I don't know how to link things. But anyways, uh, thanks for listening. And this does count as your one social interaction for today. So good job. You don't have to see anybody else. Um, And now we will end on an ad read. And we still don't have sponsors.